Okay, welcome everybody to the last part of that lecture and now we'll talk about expertise. Okay, expertise is defined as a skill or knowledge in a particular area and therefore an expert is a person with extensive skill or knowledge in an area. And with this definition, expertise may sound pretty similar to the problem solving we just spoke about, and it definitely overlaps, but it also has a slightly different angle on that. In problem solving, we mainly deal with uh, mechanisms how to solve a variety of problems of different nature, and like in everyday life and tasks. So, um, and we focused on heuristics like the hill climbing heuristic. Uh, or trial and error. However, such heuristics are somewhat of limited use in more complex domains where expertise comes more into play. Because expertise um, investigates or is the study then of knowledge which is specific to one domain. And the, the question is asked, how do people solve problems in always the same recurring tasks? And an example was like on the introductory slide, playing chess, being a chess master. These are experts for that. So to gain this expertise, uh, experience is really a key element and you have to do it over and over again and, and a lot. And there are different types of expertise. There's cognitive expertise, like chess players, memory masters, people like that. And there is perceptual motor expertise, like sports, like tennis or cricket, playing musical instruments and things like that. In this brief lecture, we will just focus on cognitive expertise and will not look at perceptual motor expertise. expertise. So let's look at cognitive expertise. How do experts think? And I would like to start this just with a little demonstration of a video of such an expert of when I uh, made these slides, I think the uh, current number one in the world in chess. Booty Getra. Just look at what he's doing. Booty Lepedetto. Competing against 10 players simultaneously. That in itself is not extraordinary, but Magnus cannot see the boards. He's facing the other way. So he has to keep track of the positions of 320 pieces blind. And the number of possible moves? Infinite. Magnus comes out on top. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you have any idea how extraordinary this looks to... No, it's uh, one of the amazing things in chess that you can... You, can, you don't really need a board, you can just keep but it... But it, it transcends yeah. chess. I mean, I just... Uh, I, I just can't fathom what you've just done. It's just, yeah. It seems like it's supernatural. Booty. Okay, so one person who did a lot of research in that area is Adrian de Grote, and he was actually a chess master himself, so he had a good idea of uh, the chess game, which he was investigating, and he asked the question, how do expert chess players think? How do they find good moves? What do they do? And as an experimental technique, he used um, he posed certain chess problems to an expert player and then they he wanted them to solve that problem and why they did that he asked them to think aloud and used verbal protocols of their thinking process. Um, this technique, the think aloud technique, may sound pretty similar to uh, introspection or self-introspection, for which you probably have learned that this is not a very good method. However, this one is slightly different because um, the participants at this point in time should just voice what they are thinking 
um, so they don't have to recall it later as it's often the case in introspection and also they should just think uh, speak out what they're thinking they are not asked to um, analyze their thoughts and come up with like oh yeah there I found the solution to that they should just think hmm, I think this figure might go there but that no uh, there's the other person figure which may beat it so I shouldn't take this figure maybe that figure so um, it's a more reliable technique as compared to self uh, to introspection so, how do super experts think? And what he found is pretty much like ordinary experts. So, the strategies overall are rather comparable. Both super experts and ordinary experts, so ordinary experts being just regular good chess players, uh, both first inspect the chess position, then they would try to classify the position, and think ahead, you know, anticipate a certain number of moves to see, okay, where does this may lead or where does this may go? And both actually anticipate the same number of moves. However, grandmasters still found better solutions. So the question is, why is that? What is the difference? What does the super expert make different? And what is uh, evident is that it the time it takes to understand, to grasp the essence of the chess position is different. And grandmasters are very quick, often within seconds, they have fully analyzed and a good concept of the position, while ordinary experts may take much longer, up to 15 minutes or so. However, Although both have the same cognitive limitations, it means that because they can grasp the, 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 chess the chess position so quickly, that the grandmasters have more time and more cognitive resources they can devote to find a solution because they are done with analyzing and then they can think about the solution while the other person is still analyzing and trying to understand. Another uh, advantage of grandmasters is that they have a better knowledge base. And this better knowledge base has been shown with a recall of chess positions. And we will see a study on that. But just to say at this point, if you have a better knowledge base in the long-term memory you can access, then um, you have an advantage in, in playing chess. Okay, so Suppose we have a chess board and we have meaningful chess positions. That means the figures are in an arrangement which could actually occur during a game, which is meaningful in that sense. And here it is found that grandmasters very clearly outperform normal experts. However, if you do random chess positions, so arrangements which are very unlikely or even impossible to appear in a normal game, then grandmasters actually are not better than novices. So this already shows that there is something with this knowledge or experience of an of the actual game and it's not about bad, that they are better to recall chess positions in general. And the explanation is by chunking theory. If you remember back the short-term memory lecture with Miller's uh, 7 plus minus 2 theory that we can remember that many chunks. So suppose you have this chessboard with the figures arranged on them in a meaningful chess position, then because experts have such a large knowledge base of, of chunks and arrangements, um, they are much more likely than normal experts or novices to detect certain patterns and just store them as a chunk. And that they have so many chunks is just experience. They had so much practice, they played so many games, and so, you know, they will look at this and see, oh yeah, that's this typical pattern. That comes up every 20th uh, game of chess or something like that. So they can put the positions into chunks and then they can remember much more. 
What is interesting and what may give them an advantage in actually playing as well is that if you have such uh, certain uh, positions and in, in terms of chunks that often also a strategy or a solution to that problem is attached to the chunk. So that when super experts see a certain combination, they immediately see that it's a low memory load and they're already popping up one, two, three different ways of, okay, how can I break that arrangement up? How can I get to the king or things like that? And this gives them the advantage in playing. It's a mere knowledge advantage. However, if this is completely randomly arranged, then naturally the chunking doesn't work. And they have to use the same, exactly the same approach as a normal, as a novice or a normal expert. Okay, so to summarize the part on expertise, we have seen uh, that this cognitive expertise can be investigated by the so-called thinking aloud technique and that the expertise of experts is at least partially based on chunking, on a huge knowledge base with chunks and associated solutions to these chunks. As usual, if you have questions, please post them on Blackboard Learn and the topic of next week, the two topics you know, from now on we have, from this week on we have two topics per session, will be creativity as one topic and emotions as the other topic. Thanks a lot for listening and watching and hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.